Welcome back to Beyond the Helmet. I'm your host, Steve McGrath. And before we get into it today, please, if you haven't already, click the like button, subscribe, leave a comment. It's really going to help get our podcast out there. But I am pleased today to be sitting down with someone that I admittedly rooted against growing up. It's former All-American at Hawaii, NFL wide receiver, Devon Best. Devon, how's it going today, man? Uh, everything is good, man. No, uh, not too many complaints, man. Just, uh, you know, taking it a day at a time. Well, as I've recently learned, uh, obviously you are more than a football player regardless, but what you're doing uh, as a, a mental health advocate, of course, I, I want to get into the, the Best Route Foundation and everything that you have going on. I mean, your story was much more complicated than I had ever anticipated. And I'd love to sort of unpack this because most people, I would imagine, Last saw you, you know, 2012 playing as a uh, Miami Dolphin, 2013, you're with Cleveland. And then it sort of goes quiet in terms of you as a professional athlete. <laughs> <Here>. <laughs> so so do, do you mind just speaking a little bit about how your career ended, where you were mentally and how things sort of evolved from there? Um absolutely so for me um you know obviously everybody know that i was traded in 2000 and 2012 was my last playing season in miami uh the 2013 nfl draft they traded me to cleveland and um i want to say up until that point you know i was um you know it, it, it was a bunch of things that led up to um to those decisions as far as me being traded and where i was at from a mental standpoint so um and and me you know being where i'm at today um i can honestly say that a lot of that uh mental trauma and mental um you know just everything i was going through was build up you know all the way from childhood through high school, through college, getting to the pros, and just a lot was thrown at me, you know. Uh, we were, you know, talking about my journey and and um, the hurdles that I had to hop over in order to um, to make it to where I was. But, um, you know, to sum it up, you know, a lot of things just happened for me really fast, you know. Um, I graduated high school, which was a big accomplishment in my community. Uh, well, before that, my mother was a single single parent mom raising two boys, um, you know, that's a big issue in, in our community and, and in society these days, especially with African-American males, you know, being raised by their mother and not having that father figure in the house with them, you know, so from that, um, you know, sports kind of became my fam my father, you know, uh, and, and, you know, work ethic, you know, all these good traits that you can take with you. And then from that standpoint, um, I went off to high school, um, you know, same thing, uh, ended up getting incarcerated right out of high school after I graduated, uh, did that. I was incarcerated for about a year and then I uh, got a second opportunity to, uh, to go to college and um, continue my education and play ball at the University of Hawaii. So going from literally jail to paradise in, in, in 14 months was a transition in itself. So I did really well in Hawaii, um, three productive years, ended up uh, entering the NFL draft and uh, I didn't get drafted, another hurdle, um, walked on, not walked on, I signed as an undrafted free agent with the Dolphins in 08. And, um, you know, just basically, you know, had to work hard to make that team, you know, and, and, and just, uh, I just wanted to give you a backdrop of where I'm going as far as, you know, what happened with the whole mental health issues. And one of the main things that I've, um, I've realized and, 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 and I drill, you know, uh, into not only myself, but my children in the, that uh, you have to take care of yourself before you can cater or take care of other people, you know? And that sounds simple, but, um, you know, one of my biggest weaknesses is that, you know, I'm, I'm a people person and um, I like to make people feel good. I love to inspire, I love to motivate, I love to help people in any capacity that, um, that I can. And a lot of people took advantage of that, you know? A lot of people took my kindness for granted and, um, you know, it was definitely, um, you know, I'm working on just, you know, having trust issues and all of that, man. So um, leading up to me getting traded, you know, was was even more so uh, disturbing, you know, because I was already in a messed up space mentally. So for them, you know, to basically trade me, um, you know, and, and me feeling like, 
that, uh, you know, I was one of their guys, you know, I was productive on the field and I was really, really productive in the community with my foundation, the best route foundation and, you know, and changing lives, you know, literally every week, you know, um, that kind of hurt me, you know, for them to just basically put a bandaid over, over my problems and ship me away. You know, it definitely didn't benefit me at all. So I got to Cleveland. I was thankful for a, you know, a new start, fresh start, but I wasn't, I wasn't at grips with, uh, with the healing process of myself and loving myself and knowing who I am, divine best, not the football player, but the human being. So I was still, um, struggling from that standpoint and things just kind of spiraled out of control. Um, I ended up getting released in 2014 by the Browns. Um, after that, I moved to Arizona in 2015. My wife, me, my wife, and my three children. And then, um, you know, it took about, I want to say from 2015 to about 2018, I was just in a really, really deep, dark uh, space, man. Depressed, feeling sorry for myself, overweight. Um, not understanding how did I go through all of that, you know, my whole life, um, trying to make it out the ghetto, the ghetto and, um, and, and doing something and, and getting to the, getting to the, the, the top, you know, from the bottom, literally, and then getting to the top and literally just falling on my face, you know, off that mountain, you know, I had a hard time transitioning and understanding why me of all this to, um, just to be you know, just to make it, finally make it and make a name for myself and take care of my people. And then just to fall on my face. I had a hard time transition, making that transition, of, um, you know, as far as who I was the person. So, yeah, I know I'm talking a lot, but uh, you can take it from there, man. That's that's kind of like the, the overview of, of, of what I've been dealing with. Oh, man, that that was perfect. It's um, there, there is so much there. So uh, while I want to get into certain aspects of it, since you've gone through it, I'm sure that there's a lot of things you may have wished you handled differently. But when you think back at the journey at any point during the Hawaii days, the NFL career, do you wish that you had handled not a, a small situation differently, but do you wish that you had reached out to more people? Do you wish that you saw warning signs that now might be obvious, but at the time were not? I, I mean, how do you think about that? and then try to maybe give any sort of advice to anyone that could be going through something similar? Well, that's a, that's a great question, man. Um, I think, you know, just to get right to it, um, a big part of, 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 of me and, um, and what I've realized is that, uh, you know, my community, you know, there's pros and cons uh, from being raised in a city like Oakland, you know, this tough city and, uh, everybody's working hard, you know, trying to survive and trying to make that quick dollar. You know, there's a stigma um, on, on, on inner cities like Oakland, you know, as far as, um, you know, being tough, you know, you got to be tough. You got to be tough. Everything is about being tough, you know, because, you know, society and the world doesn't care about you. And, and that's true to a certain extent, you know, but at the same time, um, you got to be able to, um, you got to be able to open up, man. And that's, that's, that's the bottom line. You got to be able to open up. You got to be able to be transparent. You got to be able to be vulnerable, you know, and we talk about vulnerability, you know, um, you know, in my community, vulnerability is looked at as a sign of weakness and, and what happens when people are weak, you know, people prey on the weak, you know, so um, it's, 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 it, like I said, it has its pros and its cons. So, um, you know, just me being from Oakland uh, kind of, kind of got me through certain situations, you know, from a, from a mental standpoint of, yeah, I'm tough. I can make it through. I can get through this. But at the same time, at the end of the day, look what that did to me by bottling everything up, thinking I can get through it by myself. It didn't work out at the end. So um, I just, I just, I just, you know, I do a lot of self-reflecting these days and um, I wouldn't change anything in the journey at all. I took the T I wouldn't change anything because I'm a true believer that, you know, everything is, ha everything happens for a reason, you know, what is to be, will be, you know, and um, it's a blessing in disguise, you know, that's how you got to look at it. And, and that's essentially, that's what it is. It's a blessing in disguise because, um, you know, we all have a unique 
contribution contribution to make you know to uh to society you know to our culture to the people you know it's just about being it's it's, it's just all about willing to be uh open and being vulnerable and transparent about delivering your message and um and it and it resonating with you know others to help other people man so that's 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 really what it's all about for me and that's coming from someone that if i have this right you you watched as a 10 year old, your uncle get murdered. I mean, we're not just talking about, oh, it was tough because single mom, it's like legitimate tragedies right in front of you. So that for you to say that's a lot different than someone that, you know, hasn't had a whole bunch of adversity. Right. But, right. you know, I really appreciate how things came out for you when I look at the high school situation that you have where you're not even playing organized football until sophomore year. But uh, it, it's Coach Beam, the same Coach Beam that anyone that just watched Last Chance you saw. So before he was at, uh, what, is it Laney right now, Community yeah. College? You know, he was, you know, he's been in the Oakland area forever. Can you speak a little bit about him? And because I, I know that you basically had to use sports to find father type figures. You know, how, what, what exactly did he do? If anything, I don't want to overplay this, but to help you work through this situation where you get to a spot, you, you get your grades up, you're, you're able to earn yourself scholar, a scholarship, I believe to uh, what is it, Oregon state. And you uh, go through this process where, you know, you have to spend a year in jail. And if I heard you correctly on a, a previous show that the fish tank podcast, um, that could have even been drastically worse. Cause this happened while you were still a minor, a couple months later, you would have been tried as an adult. If you get tried in a different county versus the county that you're originally from, it could have been drastically worse. So you actually had the almost the best case scenario shake out for you to be in a spot where college was even still in your future. Absolutely, man. Um, you know, I, you know, I'm not, you know, I'm not a religious guy. I'm definitely not a religious guy, but I'm, uh, you know, I'm, 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 I would say I'm a spiritual guy, you know, um, I believe in, you know, the body obviously been the temple, you know, the physical, and um, there's something inside that, uh, that makes the body react in certain ways, you know, and, um, and I think that intuition inside of you is God, you know, a higher power, you know, God or whoever you want to say, you know, but um, that's, that's just the power of, 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 of a higher power, you know, I, I couldn't have written that nobody could have written, um, you know, my journey and, uh, my story and, um, you know, just the different setbacks, but then not only the setbacks, but how things shaped up as far as redemption, you know, trying to connect the dots, you know, as far as, you know, for example, um, you know, when I got out of jail, you know, uh, the graduate assistant at University of Hawaii had played for Coach Beam some years ago, you know what I'm saying? So that was a connection right there. And, um, you know, when I first got to to, to, to the to the boys ranch to the uh, rehabilitation facility I was at um the head guy there he was from Oakland you know so he knew me already you know so it's just little things like that you can't really you know it's just just God you know what I'm saying so him coach beam you know um well his name is Amin Denny he passed away some years back but Amin Denny coach beam uh Keith Bonifa you know, June Jones at University of Hawaii, you know, all these guys uh, played a, played a, you know, important role um, in me getting that second chance and, and making that transition from you know, being incarcerated to going to college. But, you know, um, you know, Coach Bean has done a lot for me and I'm, I'm forever grateful for him, um, you know, for him, you know, sticking his neck out and, um, and vouching for me and getting me and helping, helping me get that second chance. You know, um, he was definitely like a father figure to me um, when I was in high school, didn't have that. Um, I learned a lot of good things from him, but um, I just think for me personally, man, at the end of the day, you know, me being the 35 year old man that I am today, um, you know, like I told you earlier, I have a big heart. So um, I, I gave, I gave, I gave, I gave people in general, um, you know, too much praise and too much credit for who I was, you know what I'm saying? And, and kind of put my ego to the side and, um, and, 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 and boosted other people's ego, you know what I'm saying? To, to give credit for helping me. But 
ultimately, man, um, you know, just going through this journey, I've, um, I just came to the conclusion, man, like nobody's going to help you, but you, you know, I literally had to, I literally had to pick myself up out of that funk by myself, you know, because these people, um, just not these people, but people in general, um, you know, the moon comes out at night, you know, the sun comes and, and life goes on every day, you know, and people, um, every day people are, people are chasing their dreams. You know, everybody's uh, on a mission to level up and do what they got to do what's best for them and their family, you know? And I learned that, you know, uh, during my five, five to six years where I was down and depressed and hurt, you know, just not knowing, not understanding why, um, you know, I'm reaching out to certain people and, and they wouldn't respond or they wouldn't uh, acknowledge the fact that I needed help, you know, and um, I get it. You know, I get it. I'm thankful for the, for the, I'm thankful for the rejection, you know what I'm saying? Because I know, you know, I understand now, you know, so, um, yeah. So, you know, something that we talked about before uh, we jumped on here is what the stigma is today um, in, you know, I, I'd say the world, but, you know, at least in the, in the United States, right? We don't like to talk about mental health. When someone has issues, we kind of want to just not pay attention to it. We'd rather talk about gossip. So, you know, what Hollywood star is doing this. We don't want to talk about real issues that don't have a race or a gender. They literally affect anyone and everyone. So as someone that went through all this, I'm sure you have plenty of personal stories and I'm not trying to uh, ask who did this or didn't do what, but what was it like for you to see how people react to someone that obviously needs help and their willingness to either ignore it or not help or th those that did help. Cause I know you have a big heart, as you've said, but other people need to have a big heart in, in order to help someone in need. Well, that's the, you know, that's the, that's the, that's the power of um, the power of people, the power of legacy, the power of purpose, you know, um, I go by this quote, man, and I, I, I'm a quotes guy, you know, I, I love quotes, uh, I love to listen, I love interviews, I love podcasts, I love to listen, man, so um, I go by this quote every day, man, it's like, um, you know, you find, you find your true purpose hidden in all the scars and all the wounds that you've created or developed over the years through trauma or setbacks, you know, and that hit hard for me, you know, when I first heard it, because um, the, the world can, you know, life in the world can be really confusing, you know what I'm saying? But um, when your back is against the wall and you find a way to prevail, um, there's something in that. And, um, and if you can, um, you know, if, if you can, if you can take that, your, your lessons, what you learned and then try to apply them and help somebody else with it. Um, that's powerful, man. That's powerful because I've learned so much uh, by other people's mistakes. I learned so much by other people's struggles. You know, I learned so much by listening to uh, certain individuals in their music, you know, uh, in their interviews away from the music, you know, just listen to listening to people talk and, um, you know, and, and everybody has a story. Everybody has something to say, but when you hear it from somebody of, um, when you hear from somebody that's relevant or, you know, has, um, you know, famous or, you know, just a higher status than the average person. And then they say something that resonates with you and something you've been through. I think it has a deeper meaning, you know what I'm saying? And, and you feel it more. So that was, that was basically the case with me, man. I just linked on, um, you know, my inner strength and um, I focused on me. You know, I did a lot of writing. I did a lot of reading. I did a lot of uh, listening, man, lots of listening, you know, not necessarily to people like on the phone calling and talking on the phone, but, you know, uh, whether it's YouTube or, you know, um, Podbean or whatever, whatever, you know, just, just listening to people, man, and, and the right people, because <laughs> there's good people out there, you know, it's good information out there. And, um, you know, um, unfortunately, all we hear is the bad shit, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, it's good stuff out there, you know, and it's just about taking the time and putting in the effort to find it. So right now, uh, who are you listening to? Who would you recommend as being a, a good place to go for some of the positivity? 
oh man, we'll be here all day, man. <laughs> but um, I mean, cause let's, that's a great question because you know, this is what works for me. You know what I'm saying? It may not hit with the average person, but I mean, like, uh, for example, even, even as of recent, like I will go, um, you know how you go on social media and, um, you know, depending on who you're following and depending on, you know, the, 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 you know, yeah, the people you're following, um, in the search, in the search bar or the search area, or whatever they, uh, you know, videos pop up, you know, they just pop up, they pop up, you know? So if you're following, you know, people that's, you know, always in the, you know, hip hop or, or the NFL, you know, you're going to see a lot of videos of rappers. You're going to see a lot of videos of football players. Right. But I follow people, um, you know, who, uh, you know, who, 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 who talks and, and motivates and you get inspiration from and all of that positive stuff. So I just go through reels, man. And I just listen to people talk and these, most of them, I don't even know. I've never heard of them before, but you know, these, these are guys over all the way over in India and, you know, and um, just all over the world, you know what I'm saying? Like China and just everywhere, you know, but uh, one thing about all of us people uh, we all go through the same stuff. You know what I'm saying? We all go through the same stuff. We may have different backgrounds, different cultures, but we all go through the same stuff, man. So just the power of listening. But just right off bat, man, um, I would say right now, um, you know, one of one of the biggest guys who's uh, who, who I listen to on a regular basis is Bob Marley, you know, and and, you know, there's a stigma with uh, there's a stigma, you know, about him, you know, and 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 and. And uh, what people think right off the gate when they think when they hear Bob Marley, you know what I'm saying? They automatically think dreadlocks, and they all they automatically think. And 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 for me, that's not that's that's the last thing that's on my mind when it comes to him, you know, because um, I just feel like um, you know not only his quotes and um, you know the man he is and um, the vision he had, you know, not only to um, create change and to fight for rights and all of that, but his legacy, you know, he's been going for a long time and, and people resonate with him today, you know, and that's, that's, that's powerful, you know, because, you know, if he's saying this, if he's saying what he's saying in his quotes and in his music and, you know, back in the 1970s, sixties and all of that, um, and I'm feeling that same way now, and this is 2021, 2020, whatever, you know, um, we're, we're, you know, that's, that's just proof, proof that we're all going through the same shit, you know, and it's never going to change, you know, um, he, you know, he's, he's just said, uh, he's, he, 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 you know, his interview, a lot of his interviews and, and a lot of his music just, um, is basically about redemption, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and prevailing, you know, and having that strength to get yourself back up and, and loving yourself first, you know, and um, putting yourself before others, because you can't function. You can't, if you're not right mentally, um, you're not going to be able to help somebody else and, and, and put point somebody else in the right direction. So you gotta, you know, you gotta emphasize taking care of yourself first. And, 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 and another thing people didn't understand about Bob, they thought he just smoked weed and played music, but, um, you know, it, it was the importance of, of taking care of yourself from a physical standpoint, you know, watching, watching what you put in your body, you know, because life is the ultimate, um, the, the ultimate pleasure, the ultimate experience is life itself It's precious, you know, so, um, you know, you got to think about how you treat your body, you know, your mind, your body and your spirit, you know, if all of those things align then uh then you're then you're in a good mood and uh and, and your actions speak uh louder than what you're actually speaking you know what i'm saying so you, it's a process man but you know he's one of, of of hundreds that i follow and and i listen to you know but i just had to shout him out you know because he 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 helped me a lot through this transition through this journey that's awesome man and anyone that's paying attention to their mental diet is going to kind of create their own ecosystem of people and whether it's podcasts or the people you follow on social media or whatever you're watching on TV. I mean, we all kind of have our mental diet of what we like. And um, obviously you've gone out of your way to cultivate something that's positive to get you through darker times, to help guide you through better times. And 
it's something that we all have to do. And because if we're all doing it. So if you're not going to be mindful about it, then you're putting yourself out there to fall into a trap. Like if you right. just kind of mindlessly go through things and you start taking in negative stuff, well, then you're going to be thinking negatively about things in life. And it all can, it can always <laughs> snowball. That's the, that's, that's, that you hit it right on the nose. I mean, like, you know, another quote that I go by is like, um, you know, you are what you think. You know, you are who you, who you hang around, you know, and, um, you know, I'm big on visual and um, the power of manifestation, you know, because um, you can be what you want to be in life. You know, ultimately, it's up to you. You know, you got to you got to first off, you know, you definitely got to put forth the effort. You know, nothing is just going to be handed to you that it doesn't work like that. But if you can. You know, if you can see yourself doing something that you want to do and really uh, mentally visualize it and, um, and 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 come up with a strategic game plan to uh, conquer that and, 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 and get to that goal, um, you know, visualization and, 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 and manifesting it is, 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 uh, is something special, man. It's something powerful in that, you know, and, and keeping that, you know, so. Uh, yeah, you hit it right on the nose, though, bro. You gotta, um, you think you are what you think. So, yeah, that's it. Well, using that, I, I want to pivot just a little bit harder into football because you know you. By the time you know you're playing, you're what nineteen years old at, at Hawaii. I mean, I'm sure, obviously, you're not as mature as you are now. I, I mean, yeah. does it to, <laughs> to put it mildly, right? Um, you know. <laughs> you go in and you rip off three 1000 yard receiving seasons at three years you're at Hawaii. I, I mean, in the process of those three years, you basically rewrite the record books at Hawaii, you know, even the, the WAC conference overall, uh, how much do you have to think when you're that just given the trauma and everything that you had gone through? I mean, are you young enough that you just show up and play? You don't even have to care. You're just like, Hey, I'm in paradise. Let's go. Or how much did you actually have to work and think about and and do all the things that, you know, you would obviously do now, given everything you've gone through. I say, I say, um, I would, I would say, you know, like me being who I am now and being much stronger, wiser and, and all of that. Um, you got to, um, how can I say this? Because this is deep. Um, you you got to stop and smell the roses, you know? You really have to stop and smell the roses. You got to reflect. You got to heal. You got to grow, you know? And for me, um, I didn't get that kind of nurturing or that kind of teaching as a kid. It wasn't about um, expressing yourself from an emotional standpoint. It wasn't about... Um, being satisfied, you know, well, well, it, it'll be looked at as being satisfied if you were to reflect on your accolades or reflect on your, um, you know, progress or whatever you're doing. Everything was about moving on and continuing trying to move up and get out and make a way, you know, and that's good in some ways, you know, because you want to stay focused and keep going, but um, it all, it all, it all snuck back and, you um, and um, and and got me at the end, you know, because I wasn't willing to open up and talk about what I was going through, you know. And I think the biggest thing is like I had to come to grips with man, like like people, um, you know, people are great, but um, just just that thought of feeling misunderstood uh, kind of weighed me down a lot, you know, because I was a great guy had a great heart and uh, I had no ill intent to nobody on this earth, no ill intent at all. You know, if somebody did me wrong, I'd be like, whatever, man, I'm, 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 I'm done with it. You know, but um, just to, just to feel like nobody understands you and your point of view, it was just like a wake up slap to the world. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't nobody care about you, you know? And, 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 and Bob said it too, you know, every man feels like his, his burden is the heaviest every man feel like his burden is the heaviest, you know, and that hit hard for me too, because, um, you know, we all going through stuff, you know, we all going through stuff. Who is to say my journey is worse than that, that guy's journey who just lost both parents at the age of five. Now he's in the foster home system, you know, for example, um, who's to, 
who's to say his journey is better than, um, you know, the girl next door who's, who's being um, sexually assaulted by her stepdad. You know, we all got different journeys, you know, so you can't really compete and dwell on, um, you can't really compete and dwell on, you know, whose burden is the heaviest, you know. Um, it's just about, um, you know, conquering yourself, you know, conquering yourself, not, not, not uh, the world is full of distractions these days, you know, and the biggest distraction is so, you know, not so just the phones and computers in general, not just social media, you know, everybody feels entitled, everybody wants to, um, I just feel like this generation and, and nowadays is all about uh, boosting your ego, you know, and when you boost your ego, um, you can't control your life. So sure. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta manage that ego, man. Cause that, that ego is something, something vicious, man. Social media or whatever. And you're, you're looking at this guy who's, um, you know, wearing his Rolex watch or his Gucci shoes. And you're like, damn, I want that, man. I want that. I want it. I want it. But you really don't know what that guy went through to get that. You know, you just see it visually and you're like, man, forget him. I want that. You know, that's your ego, you know, put your ego to the side, you know, and just think about it. You know, just, just, you got to be logical to yourself. You know, you gotta, um, you know, a lot of people, another thing that I learned, man, is that, you know, if, if you got something in you that you want to express and you want to get out, um, you know, that's, that's your vision. You got to believe in that wholeheartedly, you know, you're always going to have people trying to alter your decisions. And that's, that's, that's the difference from people that make it and get successful and people that don't, you know, and success obviously have different levels, whatever you consider success. But the difference is, is, you know, just not, not, not letting people alter how you feel, you know, you got to love yourself. You got to take care of yourself and believe in yourself. Definitely. Uh, Devon, I want to ask just one last question about uh, your NFL career before we, we wrap this up uh, with the gauntlet. And, and that's, you know, you had a chance to, you know, in six years, you got, you got a chance to play with a, a bunch of different coaches, you know, considering uh, you came in under Tony Sperano, Todd Bowles is there uh, uh, under the helm for that one year for half the year. Um, but jo see Joe Philbin, you know, uh, Chudzinski, and even on his staff, um, you know, Norv Turner, uh, Shane Steichen, who now is uh, starting to come up in the ranks in the NFL. When you think about the, particularly the head coaches, the OCs, did you find that there was any common threads that the successful guys did this? They brought this set of skills to the table and that's why they were successful. I'm asking just sort of, you know, a lot of what we've talked about is trying to get through dark times. So when you think about the football coaches you've had, what have been the good examples of leadership? What was the leadership styles that you saw work that you know, maybe provided you something that you could take from and then implement in your life outside of the game? Um, great question, man. Um, I've, I've had the... <laughs> I've had the, you know, some really good ones, uh, some really bad ones, you know, I'd had them all, all in between, but I think, you know, the first thing that stands out is that, um, you know, um, the, 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 the person, not the player, um, you know, I've had coaches that only focused on, you know, the player's development as a player, you know, and then I've had coaches that, um, that was really into, um, development of 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 the of the person you know so when you put the person before the player i think that's a trust um there's there's trust there you know there's um there's growth um and you know there's this sense that you know he cares about this is the way i think you know he cares about me as a person so i'm not going to let him down on the field you know and that goes a long way so um and not only that just um you know I'm gonna throw another quote at you, <laughs> but um, this is by Maya Angelou. You know, she said, you can always, um, you know, people will forget what you say. People forget uh, what you do for them, but people will never forget how you make them feel, you know, and that's deep and, that, and that's real, you know. Um, I've, I've been in multiple situations where my football coach made me feel a certain way, made me feel you know, valuable to them and uh, made me feel good and gave me confidence and brought the best out of me, you know, and um, 
that goes a long way. You know, he made me, I emotionally connected with him because something he said. And then not only that, I'm watching him and his actions on a day-to-day -day basis. So he's, um, for me, it's just clicking, you know, it's just, uh, it's just more motivation and, 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 and it makes me uh, want to go harder for, for him. Got it. Makes a lot of sense. Uh, well, man, I want to end on the gauntlet. So I just got a couple quick hitter questions for you as we wrap this up now. Man, from the top, what's most important? The number one offense or the number one defense? <laughs> You're asking the offensive guy, man. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm going to say defense. See, that's that's why I ask. I can't assume anything. <laughs> offensive guy, but you, you know. Yeah, uh, yeah. Now, do you have a favorite football memory when you think back on it all? Oh, man, I have several, man. You mean college or NFL, high school, what level? If you picked one or, you know, if, if you know, it's a, a couple. But, I mean, like, what, what pops out the most? I would have to say just, you know, right off the gate, I would have to say uh, going from incarceration to University of Hawaii and literally becoming a freshman All-American. So. Um, that transition, you know, from jail to paradise to all American that happened in like a 11 or 12 month span, you know, so <laughs> that's, that's just to give you a glimpse of, you know, how, how, how fast things was moving for me, you know, definitely. Um, most important players or the scheme. I'm going to say players because um, most you guys can, do. You can have the best scheme in the world, but if the players don't believe in that scheme, you won't have success, you know, and you have to build, uh, you have to build your scheme around the players you got because every, every scheme doesn't fit every player. Yeah. Hey man, you're, you're preaching to the choir, but I'd say like 15% of guys will say scheme when I ask. I mean, the scheme is definitely important, you know, because oh, you yeah. got, there's no right or wrong. Because you, you got guys that's successful now just, just because of the scheme. And then they get paid a lot of money, go to another scheme, and you don't hear from them again, you know? So. Oh, definitely. Now, I got to really put you on the spot for this one. Who throws the better ball? I got Colt Brennan, Tannehill, Chad Pennington, or are, are you picking someone from the field? Uh, man, um, <laughs> that's a great question, but I just natural throwing and well, shit. Well, okay. Just naturally throwing the ball and, 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 you know, me being able to see it in the spiral and I'll say Colt Brennan, but, um, and I'm not, you know, I may sound biased, but, uh, me and Colt had a special relationship that a lot of people don't know about away from football. You know what I'm saying? So I think that transferred onto the field as well, you know, but not to take anything from Tannehill or Pennington, you know, me and Colt was great friends. Um, I had a lot of success with him and, you know, he threw a great ball, you know, and he, and he knew I was his guy, you know, he had that confidence in me, but I would say from a mental standpoint, Chad Pennington took my mental game to another level because he was so smart. He was so precise. He was so accurate. And he was very, very, very detailed. So he said, Devon, I want you at on the hash at six and a half yards. He wanted me there because obviously, um, you know, he was older in his career. So he didn't really have the the, the, the physical tools, you know. So everything was about timing. Everything was about, um, you know. And then I only played one year with Tannehill, you know, and that was his rookie year, you know. So he was still developing, you know, and Tannehill was a good good quarterback, you know. Tannehill was good, you know, for especially for a rookie um, and, and, and for a guy that played receiver in college too. So um, I, I, I love Tannehill too, you know, and, and, and it's very um, – it's very gratifying to see the success he's having now. Definitely. Yeah. Um, and for the record, I was rooting very hard for Colt Brennan, watching him try to make it work with the Redskins. Um, yeah. To, 
Colt was a dog, man. That's Colt, Colt. Colt was a baller, you know. Colt was a baller, man. And you know, obviously, he he had he has his own journey, you know, and he's going through his thing. But um, you know, we all do. You know, we all got our journeys. We all got our our stories. We all got shit to go through, man. And um, you know, had a had a good time in college with him. All right. Well, man, to wrap it up, then uh, there's been a bunch kind of throughout all this, but it, can we leave it? Can we leave it on? What's the best piece of advice that you'd give to a young, young kid out there that sees you, everything that you were able to overcome, be able to get to the league, be in a good place mentally today? Uh, I mean, what, what's the one thing we can leave this on? Um, self care, self love, self reflection. You know, um, like I said, man, you're you're. You know, you're going to go, you know, there's people in this world that pray, that that literally prey on, um, you know, adolescents and, you know, young kids, children, um, you know, that don't have guidance, basically, you know, and um, that's sad, man, that's sad, you know, people, people can be manipulative and, um, you know, you just got to, you got to take care of yourself first, put yourself before anybody else, put yourself, you know, I, and, and, and for me, you know, I always put my family and, you know, my wife, my kids and my mom, my brother, the people that run my foundation, my manager, my agent, I put all these people before me, but shit, if I'm not right, how are these people going to be functioning without me, you know? So just, you know, you got to take care of yourself, man. And there that sounds, it. sounds selfish, but you got to be selfish, man, you know? No, yeah, definitely. I, I mean, there's, there's, there's levels to everything. Like you can't like being a hundred percent selfish in z to, you know, a hundred percent, it's probably a bad thing, but like, you can't be zero. You got to be somewhere in the middle. You got to find a boundary where you're making sure you have enough for you so that you can support the people around you like what you just said. So yeah, everything is like to an extent, too much of anything is always a bad thing. So just <laughs> absolute moderation, man. You gotta, Hey, I got like quotes too. Life is balanced, man. Balance. Everything is balanced, you know? Definitely. Well, Devon, from what I can see, obviously you're on social media. There's devonbest.com for your academy. There's the Devon, I'm sorry, the, the Best Route Foundation, uh, which has its own Facebook page. Uh, is there any other uh, places or, or things we want to make sure we mention here? Um, that, that, the one you see on Facebook is, 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 is old. I'm kind of moving on from, um, you know, from that and where I was going you know, back in 2011 and 12 when I first started. But um, I'm in the process as we speak of getting my website back going, um, revamping my foundation, you know, picking new board members and, um, you know, redoing my mission statement. I'm, I'm at the pre-stages of doing all of that right now. So uh, you will definitely be hearing um, from me and um, what I'll be doing in the local communities, you know, around the country, you know, especially in particular my city, Oakland, um, Hawaii and South Florida, you know, where, um, where I play ball at. So, um, same message, youth development and mentorship, you know, and, and, and we definitely want to emphasize, uh, helping people get the proper resources, uh, to help fight their mental health battles. You know, a lot of people don't, don't have money. You know, a lot of people don't have money to get therapy. A lot of people don't have access to, um, you know, to, to, to get certain things to help fight their battles. You know, a lot of people don't have that support system at home. You know, when you go away from these workshops and away from these meetings, then you're, then you're put right back into reality. How, how you know, how do we keep the message, uh, relevant and, um, and you retain that as you go home and you're dealing with a mom who really don't care about you or a father who's beating you and all of that, you know? So, just trying to be a big brother, man. Just, you know, that's, that's basically what I'm, uh, what I'm trying to do. And um, the vision I have for my foundation, the best route foundation. It's beautiful, man. I, I will be here to do everything I can, can to, to help the mission along the way. Appreciate that, man. Thank you.